they're all greetings to the wonderful archipelago in Sweden from an equally wonderful air archipelago in Finland uh, I'm sure you're having a great meeting I would have loved to participate uh, but I'm committed to an EMBO conference that we're arranging at the same time things do not always go like in the movies but actually with Milos uh, we thought that this time around I would be in a movie uh, in, in the meeting yes I know this is pretty crazy but this is what we're aiming uh, at this time anyway so um, during the meeting I think I think an uh, overreaching topic uh, will be regeneration and homeostasis my own presentation will deal with uh, the role of intermediate fil filaments in regeneration with examples from uh, the skin and the muscle uh, some of our our results are actually making sense already but some are quite puzzling and um, pointing towards a uh, more general role uh, of intermediate filaments in homeostasis and in uh, metabolism it's rather cumbersome to show about point presentation in outdoor conditions so we thought we would use one of the auditoriums on the campus and move indoors so follow me let's go and then we have moved indoors so we are on the seventh floor of the biocity building where we work as I mentioned, uh, the presentation will deal with uh, regeneration and healing of tissue, things like that. That will be the focus of, of uh, these aspects. So if we go to the presentation, Milos provided me with a title that is focused on muscle regeneration. And that will be the primary scope of my presentation. Uh, in the beginning, uh, we have here a slide presenting uh, the connections of intermediate filaments to various signaling molecules. This is a topic that has been well developed over the past few years. Uh, and where it's obvious that uh, these pr this protein family is linked to many critical decision machineries in the cell. At the end, these functions seem to boil down to the aspect of IFs acting as signaling scaffolds. There are a number of arguments that can be made in favor of this idea. Uh, but one uh, which is especially attractive that <clears throat> you have a large family of uh, highly specific genes which are uh, expressed in a differentiation stage and tissue specific uh, way. And this allows of course for tissue specific functions of uh, the uh, scaffolding. We have a model which we have been developing um, where the idea is that uh, you have an interaction of a given IF protein with a signaling molecule that occurs either in the active or the inactive state together with the IF protein and then this interaction will determine uh, the process that is being regulated. Um, this will also take in cell shape cues. Briefly, uh, a topic uh, related to wound healing, skin healing, um, is something we have developed uh, in presentations that I've given recently. Um, at the ACB meeting and also during the last year's Gordon conference uh, is related to the fact that vimentin seems to be uh, a key player in wound healing. Here we can see uh, from the vimentin knockout mouse how after 15 days uh, there seems to be a problem with the uh, skin healing and uh, there's not real healing but there seems to be more like a persistent inflammation which we can also see 
uh, in the quantitation um, at the right. What this boils down to is the interaction of vimentin with signaling molecules that are required for EMT and also uh, the epithelial to mesenchymal trans transition which is required for wound healing but also other aspects of wound healing. Here we have a transcription factor called a slug which is activated by TGF beta and also uh, the classical MAP kinase ERK uh, which similarly is activated during the process. They have an interaction both of them with vimentin and if this is absent, uh, the uh, wound healing will be delayed or uh, impaired. Now we have results from a muscle which seem to be similar uh, in a way that we have muscle regeneration problems, uh, mus maybe also muscle developmental problems, uh, in a way uh, showing a similar kind of effect uh, which would indicate a role for nesting in this case in the regenerative process. So at the outset we have uh, experiments done in myoblast primarily um, uh, over the past few years uh, and where the interaction of nesting and CDK5 has been in focus. So CDK5 is a critical uh, determinant in various developmental processes and actually it turns out that CDK5 and nesting are often expressed at the same time. Uh, CDK5 is activated by P35 uh, which is um, an activator coming to uh, the CDK. Uh, now when the uh, kinase is activated it phosphorylates the su substrate at at the same time, it phosphorylates also the activator, uh, thereby turning on ubiquitation, uh, and there you have uh, the uh, cycle is closed. But there is more to this process. There is the possibility also of uh, uh, calpine activating P35 to a non ubiquitable form a form which is not possible to ubiquitate, it's stabilized, thereby generating a much stronger signal. Uh, also there's um, a traffic of CDK5 between um, the nucleus and the cytoplasm and nesting seems to be involved in regulating this traffic. So nesting is involved both in uh, activation and in positioning of the kinase and this has consequences for cell death, cell survival, uh, differentiation. We have been mainly studying the, uh, myoblast and muscle differentiation and also uh, acetylcholine uh, receptor organization uh, at uh, uh, neuromuscular junctions. Now, uh, summarizing briefly what we have observed uh, is that nesting seems to be a modulator and a forceful modul modulator uh, of muscle differentiation uh, exemplified here um, in an experiment when you have down, re down regulation of nesting as shown in the RNA, uh, RNAi analysis. Uh, you can see that those cells uh, with, with ha which have down regulated nesting uh, are actually differentiating much faster as you can see uh, in these muscle cells, myoblasts that have fused already compared to those uh, that are transfected with uh, scrambled RNAi. Also we can see that in the knockout cells there's a much uh, stronger uh, presence of P25 uh, which we uh, already agreed was the activator uh, and we can see that there's a more uh, a faster differentiation as shown by the differentiation markers. In the contrast if you do the opposite experiment um, uh, nesting is a very good inhibitor so here's just a, a GFP tagged form of nesting. Um, those cells that are transfected with this form 
uh, are completely inhibited to differentiate, as you can see in the, with the absence of the differentiation marker troponin, uh, and you can see uh, in contrast then that the uh, cells tr transfected only with GFP have no problems in differentiation. Uh, so summarizing a lot of data, um, we can say that um, uh, nesting is uh, at the end of a pro process where you have an upstream activator of CDK5. Um, and CDK5 is actually determining the uh, uh, expression of nesting, the positioning of nesting. Um, and uh, at the same time, nesting will be determining the activity of CDK5. So the concept here is that nesting would be regulated by CDK5 and it would regulate CDK5. So the kinase would regulate its own scaffold and its own regulator. How does it look then if we take these results and see what happens in the knockout mouse model which is available? First of all, we made an observation that nesting knockout mice, they are lighter. They are of the same size, but the weight is less. The difference is in lean mass. So uh, as you can see towards the right, to, towards the left, you can see uh, the, the lean mass, which uh, is significantly reduced. Uh, on the contrast, in, in contrast, in the fat mass, these measurements were done with MRI, we can see no difference, but we can see that for some reason the spread out is much more significant. So looking at the results more carefully, we can see that the reduction in weight is due to a loss in muscle mass, as shown uh, in this analysis of different muscle groups, uh, especially the tibialis muscle uh, seems to be reduced in its mass. So having a closer look up, uh, on the factors determining um, what's uh, regulating muscle differentiation, muscle turnover and so forth, has a picture showing that the satellite cells when they're activated, uh, there are a number of different fates that they can have. As you can see, they can uh, fuse outside uh, the myofiber. Uh, then they can go back into the myofiber and contribute uh, to the myofiber strength. Uh, and they can also return to quiescence. This is nicely actually depicted in this experiment uh, where we have put a muscle fiber um, uh, on plate and we can see what's happening. So in the video, first of all, you see satellite cells migrating out from the muscle fiber. Uh, they multiply and it's going on quite actively, but you can see that the uh, fiber gets kind of mossy because there are uh, satellite cells entering back into the fiber. At the end, the muscle fiber is much thicker and it's actually branched compared to the beginning. Uh, this all reflects this homeostasis uh, between the dividing uh, and differentiating uh, satellite cells. If we now have a look on the muscles uh, from different uh, parts of the body. So we have again, these are active uh, muscle groups um, and there is one indicator of regeneration which is quite clear and that is the positioning of the nucleus. So if you have a nucleus which is positioned in the middle of the fiber, it means that it's still uh, undergoing differentiation. 
we can see that basically in the wild type, which is the upper lane in all of these muscle groups, we have no presence uh, of differentiating muscle fibers. Where it's easy to find uh, fibers where the nucleus in, is in the middle uh, in the knockout mice. Indicating that there's an active turnover uh, uh, in the fi these fibers. Now, taking the same situation into an, uh, a challenge is, of course, uh, making some kind of uh, damage. And we have established an injury model, which is established on a, a defined cut. And here you can see the expression of nesting in the upper lane uh, in a small magnification, in the lower lane in high magn magnification. And you can see that uh, already after three days there's uh, active proliferation going on. Those cells that are positive are nesting positive are satellite cells. Uh, on day seven you can see that they have all already fused. But you can see that there are also muscle fibers that were there from the beginning uh, that show a strong expression of nesting. One thing to take into account is, of course, first the aspect of uh, stem, stemness and stem cells and stem cell differentiation. So there are a number of uh, transcription factors that are required for this uh, differentiation to take place. Um, uh, um, PAX-D and MyoD being examples of, of such transcription factors. Now, if we look at this analysis or an, the analysis of these images, uh, when they are quantified, there doesn't seem to be a difference, uh, at least not a striking difference, between the uh, knockout and the wild type, implying that uh, this aspect is unaffected. When we look at the aspect of uh, muscle fibers that are still not finally differentiated at 28 days, which is the, the kind of terminal point uh, of our uh, experiment, we can see that um, in the close-up there are still a number of cells in the wild type that have nuclei in the middle of the fibers. However, in the nesting knockout it's very easy to see that many cells actually have nuclei in the middle of the myo myofibers. Here's a quantitation and the difference is quite striking. So what's going on with CDK5? These are still early days and we haven't finalized these studies, uh, but it seems that there is actually an effect. So in the upper lane you can see uh, nesting expression and as expected uh, every second lane is empty, but you can see between the wild type and the knockout that there is actually a difference uh, in the uh, P35 levels. Furthermore, you can see that there's a significant difference in the P uh, CDK5 activity as determined in this kinase assay. What's not affected is the uh, IF partner IF levels. So Vimentin, Desmin, Sunamin, they all seem to be the same. And also in this analysis of myoblasts, there doesn't seem to be a significant difference uh, between the two uh, uh, genotypes. So uh, taking uh, these studies into the context of IF roles in general, uh, in during past meetings, we have discussed a number of time, uh, times the permissive role, roles of IF proteins in regulating processes that go from one state to the other. 
uh, with the concept that IFs could be specific for a given process. So from the process of epithelial uh, homeostasis going into epithelial injury and regeneration, there would be a shift between vimentin uh, and keratins uh, from late stage keratins to vimentin and maybe early stage, uh, early differentiation stage keratins. Um, and then with in muscle, uh, we would have a shift from desmin uh, to nestin and vimentin. Uh, and that would favor uh, the uh, differentiation that is required for uh, muscle healing. Um, from Milosh's data from, uh, and also from other data, uh, GFP, GFIP seems to have a similar role in uh, gliosis uh, and in astrocyte functions. These are all uh, aspects, functions of IFs that uh, seem to be related. Uh, in our muscle case, it's still unclear uh, finally how this all boils down to the interaction between nestin and CDK5, but we, ha we see that there is a clear effect. We see that there are also effects on, on CDK5 signaling. Uh, how this will come together uh, remains to be seen. Here is the group of people, uh, those in yellow. Uh, have contributed to what I have presented today. Um, and uh, Num Vistbakka is also mentioned and he has worked in this project uh, and he actually helped uh, making this presentation. Uh, the uh, Andras Narsh has been the person who contributed with uh, nesting knockout mice. Um, and then there are a number of other col collaborators listed here. Okay, so those were the results of today. As you can see, some of our results are puzzling, which I think applies to many results in our field. But one gets a sense that there's something interesting in the air, kind of adventure around the corner. Bob Goldman, who is in your audience, um, is giving a lecture here at our center in the fall. And his title is The Coming of Age of Intermediate Filaments. I think that is what we are seeing. On that positive note, I would like to wish you a wonderful meeting, a wonderful weather. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.